Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you how I build my shelves. Uh, I'm actually changing these two bookcases behind me uh, from this into this. Let me show you how I built this. Okay, so starting things off, I had a couple extra sheets of this wood laying around, and so I decided to use that for the backing of the shelves. Uh, normally my shelves are designed to go up against uh, just the regular wall, so if I was going to be building it in the middle of the room, uh, there's going to have to be some kind of uh, backing to them so the movies don't fall out on the other side. And you'll see what I mean here or, uh, later on in the video. So I had to cut down the plywood to 77 inches. Uh, they're 8 foot sheets, so I just had to trim a little off the top. And I decided to make the shelf about 5 feet wide, and so since these were 4 foot uh, wide sheets, I just trimmed off a foot off of one of them, and I kept the other one at 4 foot. Unfortunately, I did not have sawhorses at this time. Uh, I was using these mill crates basically as sawhorses, uh, which made things a little bit more difficult, but I did end up getting some later on, which you'll see later in the video. And uh, again, I was just trimming that to be uh, 77 inches as tall as well, uh, and so it would fit with the other one. And then it was time for paint. I ended up just painting the whole thing black. Uh, it took about two coats to get right, and uh, I wanted it to be uh, black to match the walls of the movie room. And you'll see later on in the video how that how it looks and how it matches. And so I, had to, I ended up having to paint both sides of it, and they took both about two coats to make it look right. And then it was off to Home Depot for the wood. Uh, I ended up getting a total of, I want to say it was 13. Thankfully they weren't too expensive, they were only $8.47 a piece, or if you bought 10 or more you got them at $7.20. Uh, it is annoying however, I remember when these were like $4 each uh, not too long ago, so prices have gone up. So after I got them I brought them home and unloaded them into the garage and got to work. The first thing I did was cut four of the boards down to 77 inches. Uh, that is going to match the height of all my shelves in my movie room. And so I got those down to 77 inches. And then this is by far the most confusing and complex part of the, the whole process. And that is actually marking where the shelves are going to be. This is quite a tedious uh, part of the whole thing where I measure out uh, the distance between each shelf, basically measuring the top of one shelf to the bottom of the other and going through and marking all of them. And once I had one, then I was able to use that as a template and basically just trace the lines onto the next three. Uh, and it also, I did go ahead and mark the, the tops of each one so I knew exactly that there is a top and there is a bottom. And then I went ahead and uh, double checked it and made sure it lined up with the with my previous shelves. I will add here that all of my shelves I do base them off of my Criterion shelf. Uh, my Criterion shelf was the first one that I actually built, and so I use that to measure everything and make sure that everything matches that one. 
The next part is kind of a tedious uh, part as well, where I use a router to cut the grooves for the side pieces of the shelves. Uh, this way, when I do like take them apart, if I move or if I uh, decide to move a shelf somewhere, I can take it apart and put it back together the exact same way very easily. And it also looks nicer and it does um, support the shelf. And so I do uh, end up doing this for all of them. Uh, it is uh, a lot harder than just screwing the side pieces to the shelves. Uh, but it is I, I would say it is worth it in the end. So I'm using these bits here to cut the grooves in the side pieces of the shelf. Uh, that they're about an inch in diameter and so the board or the actual shells would fit nicely into the grooves. So I'm going to be cutting the grooves in a quarter of an inch in depth and so I measure on the shelves make sure that's what I want and then I measure on the router to make, uh, match that depth. And then this is actually a very important part. I measure the absolute furthest point on the bit uh, to the edge of the router and it gives me two and a half inches exactly and so I will be using another board as a guide and be measuring out two and a half inches from the edge of the uh, where I'm going to have the groove uh, and so I know exactly that that bit will be cutting right in that groove or the pencil marks that I have there uh, and it will, won't go outside of that. And So here's just a couple photos of what that looks like uh, by measuring it. So each uh, side piece gets that done, and if you're building one shelf, each side piece would get uh, eight uh, mark or eight grooves cut into it, and so that gives you a total of 16. And so I was doing this for four side pieces because you'll see there's two shelves being built simultaneously, basically. And it is actually kind of hard to keep the router in a straight line. Uh, especially the way I was doing it originally and so actually you'll see here that I did mess up a small amount I went a little over uh, where I should have and I had this little uh, mess up on the shelf not the end of the world I will uh, be able to still use that and really you won't even notice and so after I cut them I decided to go ahead and just clean up the edges a little bit the router does a uh, really good job of cutting uh, the grooves, however it does leave a little bit of uh, bits and pieces of wood, and so I just go with some sandpaper and just kind of clean them up a little bit to make it look a little nicer. And I actually did end up getting some uh, sawhorses for this project. Uh, however, you don't have to have them to build stuff. It's just they do make it slightly easier. And then I went ahead and basically rounded off all the edges to all the boards, uh, just making it a little smoother. And as you can see here, it does have just like a smoother edge on each one. And it just makes it like whenever you're putting stuff on the shelf, it just makes it a whole lot nicer to uh, deal with. And here I just kind of quickly cleaned up the piece of wood that I had for the backing, just getting ready to paint it. And I just warm water and then I used just a paper towel just to dry it off and then I went ahead and painted it. And then the remaining nine boards all had to get cut. However, the way I designed my shelves, the, the top board, uh, the very top one, it actually rests on top of the side boards. And so you know, eight of them are cut to be the same length and then the top board is about a half inch longer than all of them, uh, if that makes sense. You'll see here later in the video and uh, I, I basically just cut eight of them all to the same length because I was using the long parts on one side of the wall and the shorter parts on the other side of the wall. And then one small trick that I do is after measuring out one board uh, exactly how I want it, I use the smaller of the two pieces as a guide to basically just tell me exactly how long each board that I want. Uh, that way I don't have to measure each board individually. And you'll see here how I use the one board as 
a guide. It is important, however, to be using the same board as a guide because if you do happen to cut it slightly shorter and you're using basically the previous board from each cut, then it, uh, your wood would get shorter and shorter as you go along. And then to measure out exactly the length of board that I needed, I basically just put the, the shelf together with one board just to give me 61 inches as you can see here. Uh, that way I knew exactly how long I needed to cut the top board to the shelf. I needed to cut it to be 61 inches. And this is what I mean by it's resting on top of the sideboards. As you can see, it sits on top and not on the sides. That way it's just, it's also much stronger on the, the top of the shelf like that. And so then I just took a minute here to clean my work area. The router makes a ton of sawdust and so everything was really messy. And so I just quickly swept up a little bit before I started staining. If you are planning on staining everything, I would recommend just laying some plastic down. Uh, plastic's cheap. Uh, I know my f garage floor isn't the most uh, glamorous thing, but I would rather keep it as nice as possible, especially since I had some plastic laying around. And so that way I could just kind of stain freely and not worry about getting it anywhere or on anything. And I actually ended up putting some plastic on the sawhorses as well. Uh, as you can see, they're really not that uh, nice, but they are kind of dirty, and so I didn't want any of the dirt to be sticking to the stain, especially afterward, because that would show up um, after I was done. So I just threw some plastic on top of those as well. And I actually like to use this particular uh, brand of stain. This is a Minwax uh, wood finish stain. It's a Early American 230. Unfortunately, it is not available at Home Depot. I, they don't carry their products for whatever reason. I've worked with several different types of stain, and honestly, this is just my favorite color. I think it just comes out the best. And you don't have to use this particular brand. You can really use whatever you want. Uh, this is just the one that I use for all my shelves. And so if you've never stained before, it is pretty easy. You basically just use a paint, like an old paintbrush and you want to make sure that paintbrush is clean and you just kind of dip it in the stain and essentially you just paint the wood. The only difference is that you use a rag to wipe off the stain so you don't let it dry on the wood like you would paint. Uh, but it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I should have been wearing gloves. It is pretty messy and sticky. So I stained all the boards that I had and I just kind of put them up on their uh, the back side of each board um, on end just to dry. Uh, you don't necessarily want to lay them flat because if you lay them on something that might show up on the stain as they're drying. And if you are able to, I would recommend putting them somewhere warm. Uh, they do tend to dry faster in warm uh, temperatures, but they also will dry in cold temperatures. It just takes much longer. And then this was actually a step that I've never done before. I've never really had to do but I'm basically going to be anchoring both of the shelves together. And you'll see here in a minute of what I mean by that. Uh, but I just needed to cut a small hole uh, on this back wood panel before I painted the other side of it. But basically I just wanted to use this little bracket to anchor the, the bottom of each shelf to each other. Because the shelves are gonna be back to back and so I didn't, I wanted them to be as strong as possible. Like I said, all my shelves were designed to be up against a wall, and so since these shelves were going to be kind of back to back with like a backing board in between them, I wanted to anchor both the top and the bottom to each other, and so to make it as strong as possible. So as you can see here, I'm using a jigsaw just to cut out a small hole on the uh, one side of the back board. And after I did that, then I can paint that as well. Okay, one way you can tell if the stain is dry is just take a piece of paper towel, kind of put a little bit of pressure on it and wipe. And if you have some streaks on your uh, paper towel like this, then the stain is not dry enough. So this would probably have to take um, another, uh, it'll have to sit overnight tonight and uh, probably into tomorrow. So it should be ready in the next couple of days. So then I get to do my 
favorite part of the whole process where it is basically taking everything off of the old shelves and assembling the new shelves and putting everything back on. And so that is by far my absolute favorite part. And so I basically just emptied both of these bookcases here of all the VHS. I knew I wanted to put things in alphabetical order so it didn't matter how I was taking them off the shelf since they were sitting in non-alphabetical order on the shelf. And so here's what the shelves look like empty. This is what the floor looks like with everything piled up. Basically just move the shelves out of the way. Uh, and then I did the exact same thing on the other side with all the kids and family movies. And so I just basically stacked them up somewhere else and got the shelf out of the way. And then this is all of the kids and family movies all off to the side. So I basically just got the shelves out of my way as far as I could just to open up a pretty good space. And then I brought all the boards into where I was going to be assembling them. I usually start with sliding in one board or two boards. As you can see here, I put two boards in and just kind of get them in place. And then I put two screws per side in. And so as you can see here, I have two screws um, on each board on each side. And it is kind of time consuming because you know you are going through a lot of screws. But it is it does make it a whole lot stronger this way, and I know that this shelf is not coming apart. So uh, it, it is much better to do. And so once you get into a rhythm, I usually just go, you know, one after another. Uh, and I usually tend to screw in both sides before moving on to the next board. Sometimes if a board doesn't seem like it's slid in all the way, usually a screw will pull it together. And then when it comes to the top board, I did make it a couple inches, or I think it was an inch longer. And so that does, as I said, it sits on top. So I basically just put the board on top and then I put two screws per side in. And here is what the final shelf looks like, all put together without the backing. Then it was time to screw in the back panels. Uh, this is kind of a tedious part. It's the first time I ever really needed a back panel to shelves, like I said. So basically I was just making sure everything lined up how I wanted it, uh, making sure my little brackets at towards the bottom was going to line up how I wanted it. And so I just kind of put the, the backing on, which was a lot of fun trying to get it all to line up perfectly. I knew it didn't have to be perfect. Uh, but I wanted it to be as close as possible, and so I basically just started with the corners of the one uh, piece and just kind of made it as even as I possibly could. As you can see, there is a small line in between the, the two pieces, which I knew was going to get covered up with movies anyway, so it didn't really matter. And for this, I'm using just very tiny little, um, like, almost like thumbtack screws, um, just to basically hold the wood in place without going super, super deep into each board. And then I think I put, I put at least one screw per corner and then, like, one screw in between those, and then a couple in the, towards, like, the middle. Uh, just trying to make it as sturdy as possible. And then once that was built, I uh, just made sure everything looked good. And I moved it out of the way because it was on to the second shelf. And so again, same process, um, just on a small, I guess a smaller scale. And it just, each board got two screws, just like the other one, making it just as strong. And here I was just making sure everything lined up how I wanted it. Uh, I was just laying down the 
bigger of the two shelves and then I was just putting the smaller one right where it would be and just making sure everything was exactly how I wanted it. And then this is actually where I wanted it in the movie room and so I positioned it and uh, basically had my wife hold one side while I screwed the bracket on the bottom uh, just to make it extra strong and supportive and I did the same thing on the top as well. So I had two brackets um, holding the whole thing together on the top and the bottom and then I used little L brackets on the, the bigger side to basically hold it against the, the wall. And as you can see here, I was just kind of screwing the L brackets onto the other side and just making it extra strong. Then I went ahead and added some more L brackets to the other side and just adding extra support. And then it was a fun time of just moving everything back into place. Uh, honestly, this is my absolute favorite part of just putting things back onto new shelves. So this was before, and here is the final product. Now there are a few little things I still have to adjust, uh, such as that pile of movies on the floor, and I redid some stuff over here that you'll see in later videos, and I'll go over uh, how I have everything organized in another video, but for as of this video, I just wanted to do a very brief overview of what this is. and. I absolutely love how this came out. Um, this is all my horror VHS all in one spot, all nicely displayed. And then when you wrap around to the other side, I have my kids movies. And uh, there's kids movies over here and video games over there. And then as you kind of go down, it goes into some box sets, uh, CD soundtracks, and then uh, audiobooks and just finishing off the shelf with a couple more VHS box sets. So that is what this side looks like. And I love how this came out. I may change all of this stuff down here eventually, but for now, uh, that is where everything is going to go, so. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I really had a blast building this and I love the end result. Uh, please in the comments let me know if you have any questions on how I built it or uh, if I skipped anything, hopefully I think I described everything uh, good enough for you to understand how I built it. Um, and um, if you don't know, I have an Instagram. Uh, it's at Kyle's Movie Collection. And so go check that out. Uh, you can kind of see uh, how my collection has changed over the years. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.